Uh, blood shards are swamps, and sapphires are islands. So I'm basically playing a blue-black mill deck. Every time, in this game, essentially every time you play a land, you get a charge. A charge just a charge goes here, it goes here or here. And once you get enough charges, you can use your you can use your hero power. So my opponent's hero power is when he gets three charges. When he gets when he, basically when he plays three lands, he can use his hero power, which is um, he gives he gives me two circumstances to choose to choose from, like either like I discard a card or he draws a card, and I and I pick one. Mine is if I have if I, if I played essentially four lands or, or if I have four charges. I can make my opponent choose to bury, bury or mill the top four cards of their deck or have me draw a card. He, so he, play, he played a swamp. All right, he's playing, uh, this card is basically duress. It's like duress and magic. It's a look at target opponent's, look at target opposing champion's hand choose a revealed non-land, non-troop, which is non-creature, and put it, put it into your deck, it's threshold to become blood. So what this card does is, essentially it takes a non-land, non-creature from my hand, uh, puts it into his deck, and makes it uh, black. Makes, it, makes, makes all the casting costs black. So like, this says, I need to control like, one island to cast this. So if he takes this, it'll go to, it'll go to his deck, and... Um, I'll just, I'll just become a black card. Taysa says, fast please, don't, ex don't explain cards. Taysa, you sniping? Are you sniping me? I see how it is. So I played it. Okay. All right. So I'm about to play. I mean, they're basically sniping. So blood shard. This card says my opponent buries the top three cards of their deck. And then this card's one card. And then this will shuffle back into my deck. And next time, this card and all others with the same name in my deck will do everything times two. So it will bury six cards and make them discard two cards instead of one. Basically, it'll, so it will be three. Right now, right, now he, right now, they mill three cards, discard one card. Next time, it will be they, uh, they mill six, discard two cards, etc., etc., etc. So we'll do that. There's also a mechanic in this game called Fate Weave, which is very similar to Scry. But with Fate Weave, you, you, get, you get to pick to put a random shard in your deck on top of your deck. Like basically, okay. So Fate Weave in this game is like you can choose to put a land, a random land, in your deck on top of your deck. Or a random non-land on top of your deck, whatever whatever you want. My opponent is that creature is basically a, a creature with mind rot. He can pay three to put it into his deck and mind rot me. So we're, we're, both, we're both we're both playing like control decks with hand disruption, essentially. I drew this again, so this is pretty good. I can just make him discard his two cards in hand. I was going to play this, but getting him his last card is pretty good. What's up, Peter? Right, this is an artifact. It's an artifact creature. It's a 3 1. He can sacrifice it and destroy a constant. A constant in this game is essentially a, uh, an enchantment. Um, I'm playing a. Alright, this card is. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, so he, so, Alright, so now he's using his hero power. 
He's, he's going to give me two outcomes to choose from. I can either give all his creatures plus one plus one, or I can give all my creatures plus one plus one. Or sorry, or I give all my creatures minus one minus one. I'm going to give all his creatures plus one plus one instead. So that's not, now he has a 4-2. Okay, they're probably, they're probably on time for me explaining stuff on stream. Sorry, Taza. All right, guys, I'm going to go real quick and just explain uh, my deck to you so you understand what's what's going on. Sorry, person who was stream typing. Exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. So again, this this is basically a swamp. Um, so I have, I have Ace Holmes in my deck. I have no basic islands in my deck. All right. Easy. Hey, easy dogs. All right. Well, of cunning. Think of this like a uh, drowned catacomb in, in Magic. But you, you, it's, it's like John Catacomb, but essentially you can't play it unless you control an island or a swamp. So it says here, if you control a swamp or an island, then, you get to, then, then when you play this, this comes into play as a swamp or an island. But if you don't control a swamp or an island, it comes into play as a carless land. It comes into play as a waste, essentially. So this card is obviously good if you already have a Swamp or an Island, but if you have like, if, you're, if your opening hand is like three of these, it's kind of awful. Alright, the Ices in this game, they're a new, they're, they're kind of like a new resource. Uh, they're basically a Swamp, but what happens is, this Swamp says O of 1, this means it will come into play tapped. So, hap but, so your, this, swamp, this Swamp comes into play tapped, but because it comes in place tapped, you get to use this ability called Fate Weave. Again, Fate Weave is like a super scry. Instead of scrying one, you get to pick if you want to put a shard. So you get to pick, you'd, you'd pick if you put a land on top of your deck or, or non-land on top of your deck. Just a random card in your deck, either land or non-land, chosen from your deck, goes on top. It's pretty good for fixing uh, mana issues. So in this game, if you're playing these Ices, you have, you have better chance of not getting mana screwed or mana flooded. Uh, this shard comes into play exhausted, but when it comes into play, you you get to choose if you want to be be a swamp or an island. So it basically comes into play tapped, but you choose if you want to be a swamp or an island, whatever you need. Uh, this one, this 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 land is an island. It comes into play as an island and gives you a, a spell in your hand. This card is really good. It comes into play as an island and gives you a drop of chaos, which is a one cost sorcery speed action. Basic means sorcery speed. Uh, bury the top three cards of each opposing champion's deck. Just mills, top, mills the top three cards of their deck. Traditionally, this card is unplayable in any standard format, but since it's attached to a land, it's, it's obviously pretty good. Uh, Withering Gaze is like uh, duress. Hey, Hex Manifesto. Thanks for following, man. Oh, oh! So this is a source of speed, basically duress, but instead of it going to the graveyard, the card goes into your deck, and you can cast it if you draw it. Hey, mo oh, you're falling again. Uh, strangle. This is essentially Grasp of Darkness. So it costs two. You need to control two swamps to cast it, and it gives target creature minus four minus four this turn. It's essentially grass of darkness and magic. Um, Cult of the Endless City. This card is a one cost enchantment. Constants are enchantments. It says at the start of your turn, uh, put the top card of each opposing champion's deck into their graveyard. So you basically, each of your turn, it mills one card. And then once. One shot means you can do, you can only do this once. 
Uh, so if they have twenty, if they have twenty more cards in your opponent's graveyard, you can pay one to draw three cards. Hey, Tonic, what's up? So this card, like, again, traditionally mill cards are pretty bad, but this says uh, if there are twenty more cards in your, in your opponent's graveyard, you can just draw three cards. You can, you can pay one, draw three cards, and that's pretty powerful. So, again, constants in this game are equivalent to enchantments. Uh, we'll do this one more time. Demented Whispers is a two-cost basic action. Uh, again, again, basic in this game is sorcery speed. You need to control one swamp or one blood charge to cast it, and it costs two. The first time you cast it, it buries, it mills the top three cards of each opposing champion's deck, and then dis dis discard one card, and then it has escalation, which means this card will go back into your deck, and all cards named Demented Whispers will have their effect doubled. So the next time you draw any Demented Whispers, in, even this in your hand, your deck, wherever it is, uh, it will mill six and discard two. Then it'll mill. No I shouldn't say doubled. It just adds three more. Sorry. So it, the first time it'll, it'll mill three, discard one. Next time it'll mill um, mill six. Dis sorry, mill six, discard two. Mill nine, discard three. Mill twelve, discard four. Etc. 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 Howling Madness is a quick action, which which, which means instant. Uh, basically, just pretty simple. Bury the top three cards of each opposing champion's deck, draw a card. So you mill three, you draw a card. You, you, you mill three cards and draw a card. It's pretty simple, nothing, pretty basic. Librarian is a really sweet card. Um, if you know what Shadow Mage, if you know what Shadow Mage inf Infiltrator does in Magic, it's similar to that. My voice is a bit loud. I can turn it down. All right, hopefully it's that's a little better. Sorry, if I, if I was too loud, I apologize. Hopefully that's a little better. Is that is that better? Or is that still too, is that too, still too loud? All right, I'm sure I'm sure you guys will let me know. Um, okay, so the librarian is similar to Shadow Mage Infiltrator. To cast him, it costs, it costs, that's much better. Okay, sweet. All right, this cost, it costs three to cast. When all I get excited, yeah, if I get excited, if I get excited, I talk fast or I stutter. Anyways, all right, this card costs three. You need to control a, a blood resource and a sapphire resource, which means you need to control a swamp or an island to cast it. It's unique, which basically means it's legendary. So if you control two of these, you know, one will die. Uh, when it comes into play, deploy means when it comes into play. When it comes into play, it summons a library curator. A library curator is just a creature that's, is, that's a 1-1 one, one that says all your, chaos, all your chaos touch troops are unblockable. So see the troop says chaos touched. So this, this will be unblockable. And it means as long as that creature, the other creature lives, He's the, the librarian himself is also unblockable. And it says, when the librarian deals combat damage to an opposing champion, look at the top four cards of that champion's deck. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest into their graveyard. So what happens is when this connects, you, you basically get to impulse on your opponent's deck. You take one of their cards, put it into your hand, and the rest go to the graveyard. But, keep, but like, the thing about this is, uh, you, you can't cast your opponent's like, red cards until you take their red lands. So you probably need to take like, like their red lands or their white or, or their planes or whatever before you can cast their spells. But if you're playing against like a mirror match or deck playing blood or sapphire, you can, you can do some nasty stuff with them. And he also goes with a game plan of, of, of milling the opponent out. Alright, uh, Voice Star's Gaze. This is a three cost sorcery speed action or spell. It says Destroy target non-chaos touch troop. Non -chaos, in this game, chaos touch are very almost non-existent. So basically, it, it's almost it basically reads destroy target creature. Then if there are twenty, if there are ten or more cards in your opponent's graveyard, you summon a random uh, chaos touch troop with cost two or less. So this card costs three. You can kill a creature. 
And then if you milled them at least, if you milled them like 10 times or they have 10 cards in the graveyard, you get a random creature that costs two and puts it into play. So that's pretty powerful. It's card advantage. Uh, Massacre is very similar to Languish. It costs four, Sorcerer Speed Action, you can control two swamps. Instead of giving all creatures minus four, minus four, it gives them minus three, minus three. However, this minus three, minus three is not until end of turn. It gives all creatures minus three, minus three permanently, which is, pre which is, pretty, which, which is obviously pretty good against uh, creatures. So it's one less than Languish, but, but this is permanent. Uh, which one's easy to explain? All right, this one's pretty easy to explain. This is a seven. This is a seven cost, four six dinosaur. It's from Ixalan. This is from Rivals of Ixalan. New card. Seven cost four six. It has lethal. Lethal means death touch. When it, when this when this card comes into play, uh, target opponent or tar sorry target target player discards two cards. So when it comes to play, target player discards two cards. But you can also basic, which means sorcery speed. If you want, you can just pay three and put this from your hand into your deck. After you do that, target champion discards two cards. So if you so if you draw early, you can just pay three, mind draw somebody, and this goes back into your deck. Then later, when you when you redraw it, you can just play it again. So it's it's, it's a pretty good card. All right, demented destinies cost seven. It costs a lot of mana. Uh, so it's a sorcery speed action. You need to control two islands, basically two islands to cast it. It says, bury the top seven cards of your opponent's deck. Choose a card buried this way and put it into your hand. It loses all thresholds. So this means you mill, you mill seven cards of their deck. And out of those seven, you can pick any card you want. And whenever card you pick, it becomes colorless. So it costs like, it costs, uh, so if you pick like a strangle, it will just be. It will just cost. It will just be colorless. You won't need. To, you won't need. To, you won't need to have two swamps or anything. It will just be colorless. But but you still have to pay the whatever it costs. So you steal a card. You make it colorless. You can cast it and it goes to your hand. And the other text says, if if there are twenty more cards in your opponent's graveyard, this has minus five. So if, if my opponent has twenty cards in their graveyard, this only costs two mana, and that's pretty good. That's very good. That's very good for two mana, obviously. Uh, the last card in the main deck is called is a creature, Void Star of the Sightless. She's also unique, which means she's legendary. She's four cost. She has Death Touch, and she says when she attacks, she buries cards from, from the top of each opponent's the top of each opposing champion's deck until you bury a creature. When a creature is buried, you make a random Chaos Touch Chaos Touch creature and put in, put it into your hand. So when you play her. Any time a troop is, any time a creature is buried, she makes a random creature and puts it into your hand. And that's the same when she attacks. When she attacks, she puts she puts one creature into your hand because she she buries until she she hits a creature. All right. Um, the reserves are sideboard cards. Okay. All right. Dream call is a okay so for this one you, you need to control two islands before you can cast it once you control two islands it costs one x so you basically can, it's, it's x spell so if you pay if you pay the, the max you can put this is five so what, what this does is it says look at uh look at a random a random spell a random artifact a random enchantment a random resource and a random creature that you can cast and then you can pick five of those cards that are revealed and put, well, sorry, you can pick X of those cards that are revealed and put them into your hand. So let's say you just X, if, if, let's say X equals one. If X equals one, it will show you five cards and you can pick one of those cards to go into your hand. If X, if X equals two, again, it'll show you five cards. You can pick two of those cards to go to your hand. And if X equals five, you just take them all and, and, and they go to your hand. So it's like a it's a pretty good way to refill your hand against a, a, grind, a grinding matchup. Casualty of War is just like a it's a very restrictive Doom Blade. It's two cost, quick action. It says destroy a non um, I can't remember what, the, what these groups are called. I think think this, this they're factions. It's basically I think this is called the uh, 
This is Underworld Faction, and this is Ardent. So basically it says destroy a non-Ardent troop and or in a non-Underworld troop. So this is very niche, but it's good against some, some decks. Almost done, almost done, almost done. Alright, Hero Fall is very similar to he Hero Fall is very similar to Hero's Downfall in Magic. It costs three, it's double double swamp, it's quick action. Obviously there's no planeswalkers there's no planeswalkers in this game, but this says destroy target creature, and then exile each opposing creature with the same name in hands and decks. So it's it's like eradicate, but with a uh, quick it's it's it, it's instant. It, this card this card is actually insane. It's it's obviously really good. Nameless Pact is a is an enchantment. It says if you'd be dealt damage, exile that many cards in your graveyard instead. If you if you can't exile cards from graveyards, you lose the game. Obviously, obviously a pretty good cyber card against aggro decks. This is another languish. All creatures get minus three minus three. Uh, this is a creature that, when it comes into play, it basically exiles all cre all creatures with sockets, or, or, or all cards with sockets. Cards with sockets are basically, um, let's say like this card. Th this card is a socket. I can put any ability I want on it that I, I like, like like that that control. Since this, some, since, since I'm playing uh, blood or swamps, I can put any any of these, these effects in it. I can give it speed, which is haste. I can give it when it dies, it makes a creature with same power and toughness as it. Or I can like put a blue gem that says uh, it costs minus one. Or when it comes in play, it buries X cards where X is its power. So it's it's, it's good against decks with uh, sockets. Is why it's in, in the sideboard. And this one is it's just a creature. It's a five mana four four. And it has two sockets. So you can put two sockets into it. And it says, at the, start of, at the start of each champion's turn, that champion sacrifices a non-socketed card they control. This is just very good against cards that are enchantments or artifacts. Traditionally, blue-black decks or blood sapphire decks can't deal with enchantments and artifacts. And this is a good way, this is a good way to do it. Because he because he eats art he eats every, anything that's not socketed every turn. All right, now I can play some games. Gonna change my sleeve up. Hopefully I explained it a bit. Can you socket it differently per game? Yes, you can actually change the sockets in between games, which is pretty insane. But um, each color each color has four sockets or four abilities. So you can't get a, a let's say like a, a ruby or a mountain ability if you if you're not playing mountains. You can't get a a plains ability if you're not playing plains. So the more color you, the more the more colors you play, the more options socket the more options your socket cards have. So yeah, you can change the gyms while you're sideboarding. It's actually pretty. It's actually pretty crazy. Uh, I personally don't think you should, you should be able to do that. I think socket cards are pretty powerful as is. I don't think you should be able to change them while sideboarding, but it's not a big deal. I think it's the first time Dark Heart has ever been called just a troop. Just trying to explain it, man. Just trying to explain it. All right, my opponent is playing a champ called Lady Avalanche. She starts. She starts with twenty-two life. I start with twenty-three. Her power is if she can, if she controls, if she controls a forest and has played four lands or has four charges, um, she gives a creature she controls momentum one, which means when she plays a land, the creature gets plus one plus one that turn, and the next turn it'll get plus two plus two plus three plus three plus four plus four as long as she keeps playing lands. So it says target troop gets momentum one 
and you can play an additional resource. You can play an additional resource this turn. So basically, uh, exploration or whatever. So she, she can pay four, give a creature, give a creature that that landfall ability, and then she, and then you can play another land that turn. All right, I'll keep my hand. All right, we'll play this, which is basically the swamp, and it says here, seek fortune, seek adventure. This is the soup, this is the, the fate weave, which is similar to Scry. It says, uh, put a random resource from your deck from your deck on top of your on top of your deck. So basically, put a land, a random land from your deck on top of your deck, or put a random non-land from your deck on top of your deck. I want a land because all all the lands in my hand right now come to play um, tapped. I'd like one that comes to play untapped, so I'm going to seek fortune. All right, my opponent, my opponent played one too, but his was a uh, the same card as mine, but it's uh, it's basically the, the plains version. All right, still got, I still got I still got a slow resource. All right, I'm going to play this, this the same one again, the the swamp one. I'm going to put a resource on top because again I want uh, an untapped one. This way, if I draw an untapped one, I can play my librarian, or I can make them discard two cards. I can mind, I can mind route them or play my creature. And and if I can't, then I can just cast I can cast cast grasp of darkness or strangle. So this is fine. Yeah, the bot isn't working. Let me see. Card. Strangle. Oh, there it is. Okay, worker bot is working now for a little bit. How do I mod worker bot? Um. Okay, so you can now type in exclamation mark, exclamation mark card if you have a question about a card. Type in its name, and it'll tell you what to do. Make sure you read worker bot, not MPG bot. All right, my opponent played a creature. Cost two. It's a one one. Uh, it says when it dies, he makes a a one one plant, and it has momentum one, which means the first time he plays land, it will get plus one plus one, and then then this will change to two. So the next time he plays land, he'll get plus two plus two, and it'll change to three. Then he'll get plus three plus three, and this will change to four, etc. 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 Also, Reston, this uh, this game has a 1K for standard every Saturday. It has a a 1K for um, a sealed every Sunday. So you can literally win. I mean, when I say 1Ks, I mean like actual money, like cash. Like you will win 200, 500 dollars, whatever, if you win the tournaments, and they're all online. So I'm not sure what what your situ situation is. But if you can't travel as much because of work, family, obligations, whatever, you can play from you can play from home and win money. And they also have uh, like Popper. They have Popper too. They also have like every other every other month. If you're in the top if you're in the top 64 of players, you get to play in a free 5K. Um, the 1Ks only cost seven dollars to enter, so that's pretty sweet. All right, sweet. So we, oh man, we drew our untapped resource, but it's not an island. So, you, so, so if I play this, I'm not gonna be able to cast this guy because I don't control an island. So that kind of sucks. Uh, however, I'm still gonna play this, and I'm just going to make him discard. Uh, make him make him discard two cards. Maybe I'll I'll upload this to YouTube as a 
or at least this match as a MPG guide to Hex playing a mill deck. <laughs> All right, see how this became a two-two. So now it gets momentum two. So next time, so next time it'll be a one-one. But when he plays a land, it'll get plus two plus two. All right, so I'm gonna. I don't, I don't need any more lands. So I'm gonna play this. This is the island. I'm going to seek adventure, so put a random non-land from your deck on top of your deck. That's what I want to do. And I'm going to play the Librarian. This is basically the, this is the Shadow Mage. It's a 1-4. It's unblockable as long as this troop's alive. I can use my hero power. See how it's blinking? My hero power is I can make I can make him choose if I draw a card or if, or or he mills the top four cards of his library. I'm not I'm not going to do that right now because I can't punish him for milling. So I'm going to wait. Traditionally, you want to wait so you can like do something punishing if they if they choose to mill. Like maybe they, they put a good card, maybe they put a, a good card on top of their deck, or maybe if they mill a creature, you get to do something crazy. So traditionally, you want to try to wait until the mill effect does something kind of important. I can block here, but I don't want to. Uh, I don't think my my opponent would attack if he didn't have some kind of like pump. So. My creature, my creature, my creature is more valuable than a one-one or, or a trick. So I want to keep this. I want to keep this around. Hey, Tomb King. What's up, buddy? And Rez, if you have any questions, man, feel free to ask. This community is great. It's not toxic like other communities. So if you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask. Like I'm doing, I'm doing this for uh, for you and whoever else wants to learn. So by all means, feel feel, feel free to ask. All right, both these guys are unblockable. I'll attack with both. All right, so when this connects, if it can, right, it connects. So I see the top four cards of his library. I take one of these and the rest go to his graveyard. I'm going to ta take the, so I can choose the Fate Weave land, the Fate Weave one, which I can choose a land or non-land to my deck, or I can choose the untapped planes. Um, let's see, this turn I'm going to so, so if I get the, the untapped planes, I can mind rot him and hold up strangle. I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm, I'm gonna get the untapped, the untapped planes. Uh, I'll play it, and now it'll, it'll say I control planes. I'll go ahead and make him uh, discard two cards. The forms are quite toxic. Never use the forms. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and actually, maybe not. No, I was thinking about killing this now because this gem, this this guy is socketed with a green gem. It says when it dies, summon a one one. But at the time, he didn't he didn't control a green land, so I could have uh, killed it and he he wouldn't have gotten one one. But I want to save it for a more important creature. Like I'm fine. This I'm fine taking for a while. All right, this creature is a one-four. It says you can play additional land, one additional land on your turn, and at sorcery speed you can pay seven mana to transform a, a creature you control into a random green creature that has, that that costs seven or more. Okay, I'm gonna leave this untapped in case I have to block. Like, I'm not gonna kill my opponent with damage. 
So I'm, I'm going to leave this untapped. And just tack with the librarian. Also, also this game is sweet because it it doesn't have foil, it doesn't have foil cards. Instead, it has animated cards, and animated cards are so much better in digital. Like this, this this looks so much sweeter than a foil would online. So it's, I, I think it's awesome. All right, so attack this guy. The top four. So forest, forest, fate weave. Forest, or a quick action that says, destroy each attacking each attacking troop and verdict twice. Verdict is a mechanic is a mechanic where your opponent has a ties a two two between two bad options for them. Uh, but I can't cast this unless I control two planes. I think we can get I think we can get another planes though. So I'm I'm gonna go and take this. And I'll play this. Th this one comes to play tapped. I choose if I want to. I if I, if if it comes in play as an island or a swamp. I'll do island because we already have three swamps basically. So five out of six means we've used five out of six available resources to us. So we have five men untapped down here where it says five out of six. It means we have five men untapped and one is tapped. Obviously because we just played it. My opponent's zero for four, which means he has he has. Uh, he had zero available. Now he has four open out of four. Okay, he's using, he's using his ability. So this this troop gets momentum one. Okay, that's really good. This is um, what cards that cultivate, cultivate or this is pilgrimage. It says play a random forest from your deck, and then put a random forest from your deck into, into your hand. The only thing with this is though, uh, uh, the forest comes to play untapped. It's, the wild charge does not come to play tapped. In response to this, I'm gonna go and kill this because I, I don't want it to get a hand. This will be huge, but once he gets seven mana, he can start transforming his stuff. I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'm, I'm gonna go and, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grasp to, grasp this. This will be big though. This is gonna be huge. So it's a four-four. He can play another land because he uses the ability. So it's gonna be like a. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be a eight-eight. Yeah. I'm tempted to block here with my 1-1. One, one. I'll take it. I'll take it because I'm going to take it because if I do draw a uh, a planes off his deck, I'll have this this spell. And also, if you do want to get into this game, and you want to support the stream, you can go to battleshopper.com. It's up here in the top right, top right hand corner. Uh, if, you use, if you use the code OLLI5, you'll get 5% off, off your entire order. And that 5% comes back to support the stream. So anyone watching, or if you're watching, if you want to, uh, if you want, if you want to just want to buy cards, you can, you, can also, you can also support the stream by shopping at Battle Shopper. So. That, that's a cool way to help me out and help yourself out at the same time. All right, let's tackle this again. All right, let's see if we get planes. Aha! Got a planes. We'll play this planes, we'll play it tapped. At this point, I have seven charges. Basically, what, what this means is my, my hero power cost 
uh, only uses four. So if I use this now, next turn I can probably do it again. I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. He gets to choose. He gets to choose to mill four or I draw a card. Seriously funny. Welcome to Pac-Man. Uh -oh. Appreciate being here. All right. He had me draw a card. I'm going to Voice Star's Gaze. This is the card that it's sorcery. It kills a crew. It kills a non-chaos touch troop. And then, then if my opponent has ten or more cards in his graveyard, it sums like it sums a two cost troop for me. I'm going to do that now. On this big guy. Probably should. I mean, I probably should have, should have held up the this spell. Honestly, I was just talking about it, but just forgot, forgot, forgot to. It's all right. Yes, you can also send this, support the stream by sending all your dust, your dust, or subscribing. All right, this card is actually obnoxious. It's really good. Um, it says it has a, has a momentum, which is that thing when you play a land, you get, you get plus one plus one, then plus two plus two, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But it also says whenever you play a resource, draw a card. So whenever you play a land, draw a card. Think of this as as tireless tracker, but instead of, instead of cracking the clue, you just draw a card. This card is actually really really good. It's it's one of the only reasons why 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 green is so powerful. Uh, this card is the reason to play almost any green deck. You got dust, I have gold. I don't. Alright, I do have gold, but I, I have I have enough uh depends on the dust. If you have prim pr primal dust, I'll take that. Um I'm gonna go and block this because next turn I'm going to uh massacre or wipe the board. This has trample. This symbol right here means that's trample. So this way I'll take two, three, I'll take three here. I won't block here because I want to attack with this and get one more card off, one more card off his deck, and then I'll then I'll uh, give give everything minus three minus three. You love green and, green and magic. Green is secretly my favorite color in Magic. All you should advertise a turns deck to the MTG player. S shows shows Hex's great deck diversity. There is a turns deck. Uh, I'd have to, I'd have to explain. The deck to you. Well, we could definitely do it. I want to play a few more games of this of it, with this deck, just because we explain this deck a lot. So we'll play more more of this deck. Then then later, uh, maybe after after two or three matches, after two or three matches, we can switch. But right now, I literally explained what all the cards do in this deck. I, I don't want to switch right away. If you download the game, oftentimes people in chat here, in stream or in game, will be willing to send you uncommon or comments to help you get started. If you say you're a new player, yeah. Again, this community is pretty great. Uh, if you're a new player and you need help, by all means, whatever extras I have, I will send your way. Maybe Waffle, maybe Waffle, if he's listening, hint, hint, will start selling pre-constructed candle decks to new players for a, a set price. Instead of, instead of, instead of people have to, having to buy all the cards individually, maybe he can just like build the deck for them and sell it all to you for a set price for new players. All right, take here. We 
We have a kit function. I look into that. Cool, cool. It's inventory nightmare. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. You know more about you know more about than I do. All right, so we'll take we'll take one more time with this. Um, we'll take the cre this creature. Actually, we don't have the, we don't have a a forest to cast it. All right, we'll take the forest then. Okay, so now I will. Honestly, I should have I should have attacked with this too because I'm going to massacre. So this will give all creatures minus three minus three permanently. Johnny side says he's a new player. Can you some help? That would be wonderful. Uh, what's your game name, Johnny? I'm in a card with cake on it. Poppy cakes, yet yeah. it's a permanent permanent buff that gives a creature plus two plus two and vigilance. Steadfast, steadfast vigilance, and it's a uh, it's just permanent. It's basically an enchantment, but better because it doesn't go away. All right, so then I'm gonna play the shard. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna replay this librarian because it's gonna kill this one, and give us our guys back. Jay Sparks, what are you playing? Are you pl like what are what decks are you trying to build right now? Are you trying to build candles? Like what what do you have? What don't you have? Like I, I don't want to give you just random cards. Like what are you, what are you trying to build? And and I can help you build that, or see what see what extras I have for that. Or or if you're playing PVE, I can give you like uh, some PVE black lotuses or something, the the, the acorns. And some other PV stuff, whatever I got. All right, keep in mind both these troops have momentum, which means, uh, well, which means um, th they're gonna reset on his turn, since massacre gives all troops minus three, minus three permanently. Once he untaps. These guys will die. Because momentum only lasts until the start of your next turn. Alright, he drew another one of these. That's okay because he doesn't have a land to follow it up, which is fine. Alright, we drew a grasp. Alright, let's attack with both. We're going to kill this. For sure. Still fairly new. Been playing the campaign. I can send you like uh, some candles and stuff, or I can send you like some acorns, which are pretty good for the campaign. All right, we'll take. Sure, take a witch. All right, now I will do this card. This card lets me lets me look at the top seven cards of his deck and make the CMC colorless and cast this. We'll take this. We will strangle this, which is grasp of darkness. Uh, play the witch and play this thing. You see how you see how it became colorless. This used to be a. Uh, this used to be, a, a green white. Uh, this troop is just has vigilance. When it attacks, I get to fate weave, which means I get to put a land or non-land top of my deck every time it attacks. And this is when this attacks, I can put a creature in my hand into my deck. Uh, and then a random creature from my deck into my hand. And the random, the random creature I get from my deck that goes into my hand gets plus one plus one. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and attack. 
see what happens. We will tackle everything. It is super scry. Fate weave is a really good, super, a really good scry. Okay, so attack. I'm gonna put this back into, into my deck. See what we get. Oh, we got another one. I'll, I'll put a non a non land top of my deck with this creature. Uh, librarian hits. I get to pick a card. Oh, this card's really good. I'll just go ahead and play this. It kills him next turn. It's a 5 7. That makes him discard two cards. He has no cards in hand, but that's fine. Alright, hold on. What's up, Pickles? Sounds like Johnny Sign needs some Bruce in his life. Uh, they all get Bruce. Alright, let's go ahead and kill this and just attack him for lethal. Sh Kickles, should we get Bruce? Is that what you're saying? Bruce should. Bruce. Oh, Bruce got groomed! You guys, Bruce got groomed. All right, let's bring in some. Uh, Duress isn't like isn't good in this matchup. I don't want Duress. He's he's based. He's largely uh, creature based. I'll bring removal. I'll bring uh, some dark hearts. I'll bring this thing that says exile cards in my deck and prevent damage. I'll bring I'll bring one of those. I will cut one of these. Okay, so I get I get two gems. I'm gonna make this cost one more or one less. So. This, this costs four instead of instead of five, and I'll give it this one too. When it comes in play, it will bury cards equal to its power, so it'll mill four cards. Um, I think we'll cut this two for another another languish. All right, let's try that. So all hex mechanics are for magic? No. They have uh, some other mechanics. Well, to be, to be fair, like every mechanic is basically is basically kicker, in a way. They ha they have a lot of similar mechanics. I should I should say they have a mechanic called tunnel, which is similar to morph, but it's not morph. Don't, but tunnel is in the game, so don't worry about it. But like escalation, escalation is a purely hex mechanic. Uh, this card, this one where 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 it does something because it goes back into your deck and, and does something else or does something more. That's a uh, hex mechanic. There's there's some other ones I just can't think of right now. Uh, gems, all gems are socket cards are hex mechanics. You you can't like put gems on your magic cards. Also, in this game, like, in Magic, you can't steal your opponent's cards and, and put them into your hand. In this game, you, you can, like, take cards from your opponent's deck and put them in your hand, into your hand like I was doing. Like, with that duress, the cards went to, the cards went into my deck. Um, with that creature that I was attacking with, the, the Librarian, I was taking cards from opponent's deck and putting, putting, putting them into my hand. Magic, magic has like things like you know, like you can you can, you can steal your opponent's creatures, but you can't really uh, you can't you can't actually like steal their spells and put them in hand, put them into your hand and cast them. Also, uh, like being able to choose your champion is kind of cool in hex in hex as well. Obviously, in Magic, you always start with 20 life. In Hex, you don't always start with 20 life, depending on what, what character or what champion you pick. 
Like obviously my opponent is starting with 22 life. I start 23 life. There's some that start with 17 life. Others start with like 21 or, or 20 or, or whatever. The highest life starting champion I believe is 25 in standard. I think 25 is the highest. And the lowest I believe is 17 which is a ink which is a basically a burn champion. My opponent my opponent has disconnected. Maybe I was playing too slow for his taste. Also what's great about hex you never have to sleeve your decks. Look. Well you can't look because this thing's in the way. You don't have to shuffle. You don't have to. You don't have to carry your decks. You can build multiple decks. That's true of any of any digital card game, but that saves a lot of time too, man. Like not having to build deck after deck after deck for F and M, or for any tournament. That that, could, that just takes hours and hours. Not having to do that is true of any any digital game, but it's important for me as a dad. So. All right, my opponent, my opponent has five minutes to reconnect. If they don't, they lose this game. This is also one thing that's great about Hex compared to Magic. In Magic Online, if someone disconnects and they have a 20, 20 minutes left on their timer, you have to wait the full 20 minutes. Uh, here, you just have to wait five minutes. If, if they don't come back, uh, you win. So like, if someone rage quits, you'll, you'll win in five minutes, it's okay. All right, let's see where Bruce. Come here, come here, Bruce. Come here, show me a new look. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let's see Bruce. For those that don't know, we're called the Pack because we are a family. My email is Bruce because he is Pack leader. Uh, and Bruce Bruce Howells for new subscribers. Or this when the stream ends. But I'll give you an example now because Bruce got a haircut. Alright, Bruce, you got a haircut, didn't you? Show me your haircut. Bruce! <gasps> Bruce, you're so fancy. Bruce, can you show me your howl? Can you show the pack your howl? Alrighty. Good job, Bruce. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. I love you too, buddy. You're a good boy. Um, I may have to reconnect. Right, I, think, I think I have to reconnect. So I'm just going to go ahead and reconnect. First, remove my hand. Good job. All right. And also in this game, when you rank up, like to play is free, right? So if you like, if you're playing, like I'm ranking up. I'm, right now I'm gold. Whoops, rewards. So if you start in bronze, 
you get like sleeves, you get currency, gold currency, you get promo cards. This is this is Bet Magnus Spray. Deal, deal two damage target creature. If it would be if it would die this turn, exile instead. Uh, you get more gold. You get packs. So once you're like bronze tier one, it'll give you a pack. And then same with Silver Division. Like you get more rewards, gold, more rewards. You get two packs now. You get you get a promo rare card, which you, which is Consult Talon. This card is really good. Uh, it costs seven. It says draw three cards. But mobilize in this game, it's kind of like uh, Convoke, except the creature pays for two of the cost. So if you so if you tap three creatures, this card only costs one mana. And then obviously platinum, you get three packs. Then cosmic, you get a sweet sleeve. And if you're top if you're top sixty four in this, you qualify for a five k. All right, real quick, mail stuff. Oh, the fur gave us a frost heart primal pack. Holy shit! Yo, fur, thank you, man. He says he says we can give it away on stream or convert it to dust. That's tempting. We make we'll, we'll see. At the end of the stream, we'll see what we'll do. All right, so people that need cards, real quick. Fur, thanks again, man. Thank, I appreciate that. Okay, so what were they? What were the in-game names again? I'm gonna scroll back up to see if I can find somebody real fast. Uh, I think one was it Jace? Hmm. Okay, one was Johnny's side was Jace Sparks. He said he said he was playing in the campaign. All right, so let's see. In the campaign, for sure. I don't really use these, so I'll definitely. I, you can have the, this stuff, these packs. Uh, also, oh, we have Acorn. You can have. 10 acorns, which is basically a black lotus. Uh, candle stuff. So, illuminate. Illuminate is probably the, the cheapest deck to get into this game. So, let's do four of these. Um. Give you some flame licks. Man, I only have three ice out of flames. I'll give you give you two ice out of flames. My card's not worth much anyway, so you can find 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 some. I'll give you some wax wax dons. This card's definitely played. Let's see uh Things of wax. Oh, this is this is my sealed gauntlet. So I can't I can't give I can't give, give this away yet because it's my sealed deck. Uh, what other card does this this deck play? Uh, Choir of Lumos give you. Let's see, give you a Choir of Lumos. Maybe there it goes. I'm not sure what else the deck plays. To be quite honest, I know it plays the Fate Weave cards, so Ice, right? Imagine plays Ice. I'll give you some Ice, some Bling Bling. Give you some more Ice. Okay. What's happening today on stream? We're explaining how mill worked. What what other what other cards does Candles play? Let me look it up and see what other cards I may have extra that I can, that I can give to you. All right. Okay. 
Cassia Gold Knight. Wrath of Elements. Do I have any of those? Give me a couple of Wraths. Oh, not that one. Um, plays Kindle Kit. Some plays the some play Kindle Kit. Give you some Kindle Kits. Some plays three, but keeps going to play four. Some play light them up. I'm not sure if I have that one, but double check. This should be a good start. Uh, I guess I don't have, I guess I don't have light them up. That's weird. Oh, is it a, okay. All right. It's off. I'll give you one light the votives. I'm keeping, I'm keeping, I'm keeping my full art ones. Um. They have, they have, he has, he has four wax, he has four wax dons. I only have one wings of wax. I gave him four wax, four wax dons already. Uh, I think he, I think that's the deck. I mean, like, it's like a, a good, a good portion of the deck. Oh, some play flame barrage too, right? I have two flame barrage. And this is like, 60% 60, 60 of the deck. Alright, there you go. I guess it plays Guidance too. Do I have Guidance? I have 32 Guidance. Here you go. Here's some Guidance. Here's some Guidance in your life. Merry Christmas. Welcome to Hex. You know, welcome to Hex. There you go, buddy. And... Alright. There you go. And rest, rest tone, if, whenever you, uh, whenever you play, whenever, whenever you start playing, let me know. You're welcome, Johnny, Johnny Snide. That's a pretty decent. That's a pretty good start to the deck. Uh, let me see. The one I was looking at is this deck. It has like a eighty percent win rate or so. So. Uh, uh, Johnny, this is it right here. I gave you the wrath, the candle kits. Um, I give you, I, I give you the cremate. I think, I think I have cremate. So the only things you actually, I gave you the ices. The only things you uh, might need are light em ups, uh, light em ups, choir of lumos, and. You don't need Wax Sacrament. Obviously, obviously, it's really good. But if, if you like want to make competitive, you just need Wax Sacraments and maybe like a Sign of Month, and you're good to go. So that's a pretty good start. What is Dust used for? Dust is used. Dust is used for just cosmetics. It's used to make uh, uh, cards full art. So usually, a card is like starts like this. When you dust it. Just like that. I'm not sure if it won the bash or not. I'm sure I'm sure Kennels has won a bash. Alright, so we'll play the swamp and play non non land a non land on top. Bash was as close. Well, there you go. 
Yeah, it's actually, really, actually really close. Or, or the same thing. Uh, yeah, this list actually, I think, won the bash. Which means it won a 1k, so you have almost a 1k. Yeah, you're very close to one, a 1k deck, so it's, it's pretty insane. Pretty good. Uh, we're playing against a very popular champion. She's she's aggro. Her power is when she has seven sh seven charges. She summons a burning banner. A burning banner is an enchantment that gives all your creatures plus one attack and speed. Uh, this deck tends to be very good against the the controly or slow decks like me. But we'll see we'll see if we can stop her in time. Because there's ways in this game to uh, obviously eight usually lands give you charges, but there's ways to uh, get more charges besides just lands. Like there's spells that give you charges, there's creatures that give you charges. All right, so we're gonna mill him for three, make him discard a card, then this will go back into our deck, and future ones will. Uh, Mill six, discard two, so on and so forth. My opponent played this Savannah Alliance, essentially, it's a two one. However, there's a card that says uh, give a it costs one and it gives, it gives a creature plus one plus one. It's called a Valor. And this says when this becomes valorous, it makes it makes a copy of itself. It's a one shot ability. But when this card becomes when you play when you play that that spell on it, it becomes a uh, a three two and then makes a copy of itself. And Valors can be generated off other cards, like there's some cards that make Valors for you. Like for example, he's playing this card too, which is a very good card. Um, it's a four cost, three, four. When it comes in play, make a Valor and put it in your hand. So it makes one of this. Sorcery speed action, target troop gets one plus one plus one Valorous. It becomes Valorous. This one says, Whenever you play it, play a Valor, this deals three damage to target, to target opposing champion or troop. So whenever you play a Valor, this thing lightning bolts stuff. It's, it's actually really really good in this deck, or not, in, in my opponent's deck. Ollie, how far up in gold are you? Uh, I'm not sure. Wasn't really, wasn't paying attention. How does Ardent Haraza compare to Socket Haraza? I think Socket is uh, overall better, but people I think people play Ardent to avoid uh, Stalking Quarry. I think it's I think I think that's the reason they play uh, this version instead. Alright, so we'll take two, go nineteen. Uh, our opponent should play this first. This is a three cost three four. It says when a um, ardent troop you control deals combat damage, deals combat damage to a champion. Make a valor point your hand, and when this attacks, all valored creatures become indestructible. If I think if you would have played this first, uh, when this did damage, it would have made a valor. So he should have played this first and attacked. Play this. Hmm. I'm trying to think if I want to kill this now or try to get value out, out of it. To get value, my opponent needs 10 cards in his graveyard. So basically, what I'm trying to think is like next turn if I want to do it. Next turn, I can uh, try to mill him for four. And if he mills four, then I get a troop. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to play the, the, oh, the Librarian. Um, the Librarian can block this Conjure, so he won't, he won't attack with it. If you attack with this, I can just chump block it with my 1-1. One, one. The next turn, I can give him the option to mill 4 with uh, my Hero Power. Alright, 
this is where we get in trouble. This, this is where we get punished for our for our decision. Um, this card is a four cost three four. When it comes into play, it gives a valor for each uh, ardent troop control, which is this faction. He controls three. He's, he's going to get three val. He's going to get three valors. On top of that, this is a saga, this is a saga card. He put he put on it. When it comes in play, gain charges equal to to its attack power. So it's gonna, it's gonna give him it's gonna give him three charges. What this means is it'll come into play, it'll give him seven charges, which means which means he normally could drop a banner. He can't drop a banner though because uh, you need to control two mountains. He only controls one mountain, so that's good. So he, he can't drop a banner just yet, but he has he has enough charges to do so. So as soon as he gets his second uh, red threshold. He can he can drop a banner. I I really I really need to kill this creature again because he has valors, so he can just like copy this creature over and over and over again. I think this turn he's kind of he's he's he's, he's in a rough spot this turn. All right, so he's tackling with this. Definitely gonna block it. I mean, it's only three damage, so I'll just block it with this. All right. So first things first. Let's attack with the Librarian and see what we get. Maybe attack with Librarian. Alright, attack with him. So he's unblockable because this this guy. Alright, so all creatures. He has all creatures. All creatures. Um, I can't. I can't cast any of these because I don't control planes or a mountain. This one has speed, uh, which means haste. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not leaving the market to be attacking him. I think I'm just gonna take a the one cost two one. It's it's cheap. I can block with it. Whenever I draw. Whenever I draw a mountain. All right, so now I can play this and get a charge and see if he mills mills four cards with my, with my hero power, or or makes me draw a card. Instead of doing that though, I'm just gonna play this. This one doesn't give me a charge, but it gives me a spell. It gives me the mill three, so I I, I still stay at three charges, but it's fine because this mills three cards, which put him up to eleven. Then I can cast this spell. To kill his two one, so it doesn't get like a, a, a buttload of creatures, a buttload, a buttload of copies off of it. So I'll kill this one. I'll get a random creature, and there we go. We'll pass back. All right, decree banishing is uh, <clears throat> journey journey into nowhere. It's an enchantment. It says when it comes to play void, which is exile. Void target, void target opposing troop. When this leaves play, put each card void this way back into play. So it's essentially journey into nowhere. So he's going to journey my librarian. Uh, this card is a two cost one one. When you play an ardent troop, make a valor, which is the one which is the what the deck's based off of. This has plus one plus one for each valor to be control. Obviously, you can start seeing the synergies his my opponent has. Um, six. I don't want to give him. I think, man, I don't want to give him too, too many valors, but at the same time, like, 
think I've take this. Because this card says, uh, it's one three. I can tap it to tap an opposing troop if there are ten more cards in my opponent's graveyard, and he has he has ten more cards. So that's a tapper. All right, I'll block one. Take three. So this way he only gets one valor. But this guy basically uh, neuters my discard my discard plan. Let's play this. All right, let's see what he does with my champ power. We'll see if he mills or if he lets me draw a card. Wow, let me draw a card. Surprising. I didn't think he would do that. All right, we'll just replay this. Actually, we'll play this first, make him discard a card and mill three. Oh, discard two cards now. Nice. That's good. Well, in that case, I can make him discard two more cards. Now I'll just play the librarian. Yeah, I'll just play this. And next turn, depending on how many of these creatures get through, we can... Uh, we can hopefully make him discard his hand. Never mind. Our opponent has... A, gr a handful of valors. So he's not discarding anytime soon. Oh man, what am I doing? Ah, uh, I forgot. I I didn't set a I didn't set a I didn't set a stop. So I I forgot. To, I, I should have tapped one of these. Uh, that's my fault. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take three for no reason. I should have. This should have been. One well, should have been tapped. From this. Luckily, his his hand is full, so he's gonna have to discard the valor he made. But still, that's still an error on my part. I took three for no reason. All right. First things first. I'm gonna attack with this again. God, this God, the streamer is so bad. I know. Trying to explain everything to you and play. Perfectly too. Ah. Blonde, bronze player skill. You're right. You're right. I am the bronziest. Okay, so if we get a, a diamond slash planes here, we can play it, make a blocker. I would like to get a land more than anything else. All right, let's take the land. Okay, let's kill. Let's kill, huh? Let's kill the guy that, that's making him a bunch of valors. Let's kill this thing. Let's make him extra valors. Let's see what we get. He makes sweet decks though, so it's kind of forgiven. Thank you, thank you. The random creature we got is a one-two. It's unblockable. It says when it attacks, if you control the troop with the highest power, I guess plus two attack this turn. Uh, just a creature to block with. Nothing really crazy. Alright, I'm gonna play this. I honestly kinda want I want a shard. Because I wanna I just wanna hard cast this next turn. I'm gonna do this too and hope he has something else besides a Valor. Or if they're all Valors. Oh no! Oh no! Here's a conjurer. Guys, we can die. We can die out of nowhere. If he draws a mountain, we're dead. Essentially. Because he gives all his guys haste. He plays that one, uh, that 2-1. It, keep, it keeps making copies of it. Then attacks us for a bunch. So all he's missing, all right, he's killing this guy. All he's missing is a, uh, a mountain. Luckily, he didn't draw it. All right, making this Valorous. 
Taking that Valor. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Alright. Beginning of combat. Let's tap this one. Then he attacks. Does not attack. Alright, so he's, he's waiting He's waiting to like basically Hadouken me. Alright, we drew an untapped resource. That's good. I can just play this. It's a big it's a big creature. It's a 4-6. When it comes into play, it discards two cards. So it's going to discard two Valors. All right, so now we're we now we're in a pretty good spot. All right, guidance. This card lets him put a land and all in on top and then draw a card. Oh wow, he put a land on top and he drew another plane. So that's super rough. That's obviously very bad. But he still will make a bunch of guys. He's gonna make an army. Luckily, they don't have haste. There's, there's that. Alright, we got Demented Destiny. This is the one that mills seven. And out of those seven, we can pick one that goes to our hand. And it loses all thresholds. Oh, man. Oh, God. Baby, these are good ones. So this this one says whenever you play it, whenever you think of Young Power Manager, whenever you play a, a spell, or, sorry, any spell, when you play any spell that's not a land, you get to make a 1-1 one, one candle or give all, all your candles plus 1 plus 1. And this one is a 3-4, uh, you can play a Valor, you can kill, do the damage. I'm going to take this one because I want to kill his uh, Conjurer. So we're going to play this. We can cast Scion. If we took Scion, it would be colorless. But we're going to take this because I want to take his combo. So I was going to make a copy of okay, I was going to make a copy of my creature and then kill kill the one kill the one of his that makes copies. So we were going to do we were going to do that. All right, I guess my opponent duress is not great. This card was good in that game. Overall, it's not that good against him. However, I do want Massacre. I do want Hero Falls. I do want Dark Heart. I do want Nameless Pact. Nameless Pact, or not Nameless Pact, a Dark Heart will have minus one cost and bury or mill. And that's usually, usually how bored against them. This card it doesn't kill anything against them because this kills non ardent troops and non unreal troops. His whole deck is ardent, so it's not going to kill anything. Is Howling Madness better than Cluck Twice? Uh, I think I think I think the. I still think Cog Talk, I think, think I still think Cog Twice is good. Uh, making miscard two cards is still good. Like honestly, if we knew do that to him, he would have had uh, more conjures out too. I don't think it's insane, but I think it's I think I think it's good. All right, this hand is kind of iffy. Only have two two lands. All right, got got a lot better. We have three lands now. Right, we need a swamp, which will choose blood. Like here is where cock twice will be good if we can uh, do it. Like making him discard one card, then making him discard two cards is uh, pretty good. Okay, this card's a 3 2 vigilance. Anytime we cast a spell, all cards in hand will cost two more this turn. It's a, it's kind of beating. So we'll see all, all cards cost like five, not they all went up by two. So it makes it, it makes it very hard to cast more than one spell a turn. He discarded a land. All 
All right, so he's going to land or not land, put in his hand. All right, there's the mountain. All right, I'll take three. Okay, now I can make my opponent discard two cards with the creature, or I can play the librarian, or I can kill this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the librarian. Uh, that way, if he attacks with this, I can actually just double block with the librarian and the, and the, and the, and the creature it makes and kill this. Let's do that. It's also usually better to use this card or mind right your opponent when they have only two cards left. Alright, doesn't have the second mountain again, which is good for us. Or he's sandbagging it. Blaze of Glory. Blaze of Glory deals X damage target troop. If it would die this turn, exile instead, and has life life drain or life link. So it's going to do a four to this. Exile it, gain four. All the nasty stuff. All right. So this turn we're going to play this. We don't get a charge for it, but we get the mill three. Uh, we'll play uh, cult. Which this card, this is the enchantment that mills them three every turn. And then we'll choose this ability. It costs nine, but the ability stays the same. We'll make him discard two. So we'll put eight cards here. So every turn, this will mill him one. I'll mill him one, and once there are 20 more cards in his graveyard, I can pay one one time, one shot, one time. It'll lose his text, but I'll draw three cards. He discarded a journey and a scion. Okay, that's a pretty good card. This is a four cost or three cost four four. Uh, when it dies, it, it summons two spirits. When it comes into play, it fate weaves. This is a really good card, but but you can only play in your deck if you if you uh, if that contains at least ten differently named ardent troops. If you if you think of like if you think of, of Reno Jackson in uh, Hearthstone, it's similar to that, but different. Like, you, you can have multiple of the same card, but you just have to have 10 different named uh, Ardent Troops. All right, so he put a, he put a, a non-chart on top. He should have put a shard on top because I'm, this card is milling him one every turn. So I, I, I get to mill this creature because he put a creature on top. I want to play this. I'm going to pass. The reason I'm passing... Actually, no, I don't pass. No, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. I want to be able to play Void Star and mill him three in the same turn. So I can, so I can trigger her ability. Well, never mind. I should have... I guess I, guess I should have killed this before. Can't do that now. That sucks. Um, if I kill this, he gets two flyers. No, I think I'll just do this still. Yeah, you're right. I could have played it, then played one. No, I couldn't have. I couldn't. Oh, I could have, yeah, you're right. I could have played this, then played the resource, then played the one drop. You're right. Mistake. Yeah, I could have played this. Uh, it makes all the cards in my hand cost one more. I could have played the land that makes the spell. That spell only cost one, though, since, since it was just made. Okay, let's play her. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, here fall voids, um, but this game, there's no stop during like uh, draw step or anything. I can't stop my opponent during, during his draw step and kill this. If he drew one, I get to exile them all. This game has no... Uh, it voids other copies that aren't in play. So if he had more copies, like... He's, he's only playing two, essentially. Yeah, you can stop on the upkeep, but you can't stop during the draw step. Yeah, you can stop during the ready step. You can't start. You can't stop actually during the actual uh, draw. I'll take four here. All right, so I'm two. If it was a creature, okay, it was a creature. So I got, I got, I got a creature. All right, so I'm going to. Oh, that's very good. That's good. That's a good one too. I'm level two. I milled two, so I got two creatures. I'm gonna go to this. I'm gonna kill this creature. All right, I'm gonna attack with her. She's going to mill until she mills a creature. Okay. Unfortunately, the one I made, uh, it, it can't block. This can't block. So I'm just gonna mill him. Mill him three. If I'm if I'm on more creatures, I'm gonna get more troops. I got more troops. I'm now he has 21 cards in his graveyard, so I'm gonna activate one of these. Uh, I don't think we played land this turn, so I'm, 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 I'm gonna do this now. So we draw three. We have this card a bunch, but it's fine. Like all these cards are. It's not that. It's not. Oh wow, we can draw. We can draw land. All right, so it's fine. We'll discard this. I don't care. He has no cards in his hand. We'll discard this. This card's better than graveyard. It comes back to life if we. It comes into play if we mill a creature. Uh, Husher is not that great. This mills how many? This mills six, so it's fine. Discard this Husher. No, I want Relux. I wanted to play a land this turn. That's why I did it on my turn. I could have acted. I could have acted during, during his end step, so I don't discard. But I really wanted to play a land. All right. Well, Voice Star is dead, and we're taking five. Oh, we're not taking five. We're taking four. I was trying to get more lands so we could play all our spells. Like we have so many spells in our hand. I, I, I don't need. I didn't need more cards. I need more resources to play all these cards. This one says two. Whenever you this is in play it has nine lives. So basically, it has nine lives. So when it dies, it comes back to life nine times, it's, unless you exile it. Then it says when opposing. Uh, resource when opposing land is buried, it summons a 1 1 unblockable. I'm sure we're taking 4 here, eventually. Maybe take four. My plan for next turn is to activate this to draw three cards, um, and then and then play. Uh, if if I draw if I draw an untapped resource, I can I can hold up I can play dark heart and play grasp, which is which is which is the ideal situation. So I'm gonna try to activate this, draw an untapped resource. Play Dark Heart, so I can start start eating away at his board, um, which will mean this will die, which is important. 
And then I can strangle this, which will give him two spirits, but I won't take any damage that turn. The next turn he'll sack the spirit, and so on and so forth. And I'll lose these, but uh, I, I, I would have already activated them, so it's okay. Also, I'm sorry about I'm sorry about these DCs, these disconnect, th these disconnects. Uh, I normally don't get this many disc disconnects. Like this is this is like the most I've gotten probably ever playing hex. I don't know if my opponents are just have bad internet connection or what's going on. Maybe that maybe they're tilting. They're like I'm losing to a mill deck. What is this life? Oh, right, well, while we're in downtime, if you guys enjoy the stream, make sure you follow the stream. Beautiful. There we go. Ravi Nook. Welcome to the pack. Oh, oh! Thanks for following. And thanks for being here. Um, if you want to support the stream, you can buy your cards from bashopper.com and use code OLLI5. If you do this, you'll get 5% off, and I will get that, and that 5% will go back to uh, the stream. It will support the stream. You can also subscribe to directly support the stream. If you subscribe, you will get a sweet Bruce emoticon. And uh, obviously, love you forever. Or Bruce will. Actually, actually, I will. But I'm not sure Bruce will. And you can also throw bits. I'm not exactly sure, not exactly sure how, how bits work. I think they're basically like uh, each bit is worth a penny. If you throw a bit, they'll go into this jar. Our, my top, my top bit that I've, that I've ever gotten was from Rising Sun for 500 bits. So bas basically rich. 500 pennies, basically rich. I'm pretty sure that full out cards are causing connectivity ish connectivity problems. Nah, there's no way. There's no way. It's impossible. Ollie, please tell me what happened to Hex Hour. I don't see Varanus too much either. Uh, I think, well, Ver Varanus got caught up in life. Uh, he doesn't play Hex anymore. Or he plays Hex, but he doesn't play as much anymore. I don't think he has enough time to... Basically, what I'm trying to say is he has, he has other priorities right now, which I can respect. So Hex Hour is on pause slash hiatus for... The foreseeable future. Either I get another co-host and start it up again, or I just wait for Varanus to be free. Tomb King says, or just donate through PayPal. There you go. You can also just donate through PayPal. Gold tier one. We got two packs. Ollie, that's sad. I liked it. I mean, I enjoy doing it too, but I don't know. Obviously, need to go free Varanus. I was thinking about trying to do. <laughs> I was thinking about trying to do like a hex minute, where I sit down in front of YouTube and basically just uh, talk about the game, like hex, what's going on hex, what decks I'm building. Or just like one of the tournaments, uh, basically maybe like a 10 minute video or something, and just upload that to YouTube. That way, it's it's not too much time. It's not very time consuming for me, and I can just uh, 
try to do like once per week or something. I can try to do that. But right now, like, I'm trying to balance a lot of things. Like, I'm trying to balance magic. I'm trying to balance money, articles, traveling to events, like, and being being a, a dad, obviously. All right, let's play again. I can co-host with you, got no time to record, got no mic, and no time to play Hex, but could totally co-host. Perfect, perfect. Actually, doesn't, doesn't Hockey Channel have a, have a podcast too? Port, what'd you like most, what'd you like most about the podcast? That's, impo that's important to know, so if I, so if I restart it, or if I branch off doing something else, or if I get somebody else, uh, what thing did you like most about the podcast? All right, another deck. Uh, this hand is pretty bad. It's it's bad as in a slow, but well, I think it's playable. Like this card is basically doesn't do anything. It's kind of old to five, but if this shard finds the untapped swamp, then we're okay. Two things. First, the interaction between you guys. Second, most of the subjects were what's happening in the Hex world. Yeah, we, we try to keep up, up to date. I like podcasts that contain Monk of the Sacred Stones. Alright. Duly noted for... Do you, do you guys like... Would you watch a... Like a YouTube video if I, if I did one by myself? Or would you rather would you rather have would you rather it be a podcast? You just like podcast more? Or is a YouTube video also good? So I can do I can play this tapped. To get, a, to get a blue source, or I can play this untapped to get a a black source or a blood source. I think I'm gonna play this untapped. The thing is, like, if, if I play this untapped, I get to hold up Strangle or Grasp of Darkness. If I play this tapped, I don't I don't hold up uh, Grasp of Darkness, but I, I ensure I can cast Librarian the Librarian next turn and have uh, Massacre on turn four or or resource for Massacre on turn four. It's actually kind of tough because if he, he's gonna play a troop, I'm gonna play the librarian, and then he has a chance to play something else. Or I can, hmm, or I can play this, kill whatever he plays, and then if I'm lucky and draw an untapped resource, I can uh, play the librarian. The only problem though is like if I if I play strangle, my my, my opponent's next turn. I'll have no plays if I draw a, like a, a, a tap resource or a cost a card that costs two, more than more than two. This is a risky, but I'm gonna go with this. Gonna try to do that, and hope my opponent doesn't play anything crazy on turn two. I'm not a big meta follower, and would not watch a meta deck building. Would not watch a meta deck building thing. I'm more general hex talk talking, which can include meta and other stuff. All right. Limestone says I watch all your YouTube content already, so the more the merrier. Well, thanks you, thanks Limestone. I appreciate that. That's that, that's actually sweet. Thank you. Uh, Sexy Beat says satisfied with either, but video obviously more engaging with one person. That is true. 
Port says, I would prefer interacting between two people. I can try two people, but two people is a lot more work. Uh, Zach says, a podcast with one person. I've never done, never, never done a podcast with one person. I'm not sure how good that is. Or this, this thing has speed, which is kind of annoying. I know it'd be a, anyway, I'm, I'm going to get food. BRB. All right, limestone. Ranger says, I prefer a podcast, but prefer, prefer hex content over no hex content. Single mic work is hard. It is. Get your magic colleague to talk hex. Uh, we have, uh, I have a podcast called Think Twice with Justin Parnell, and I have talked about hex in that podcast. Uh, I can try to see if you want, to, if, if, if we have a, a segment just on hex, like one segment on magic, on hex, and something else. Okay, so my opponent played a, a two cost uh, haste two one. When it untaps, he he gets to make a valor. Or he can transform it into a 2-1 creature that says whenever it attacks, it deals damage equal to its power to target opposing creature and to my face. So this card's actually really good. What's going to happen here is I'm going to play, play my resource, play my librarian. He's probably going to flip this and kill on one one. Actually, I don't know if he does that, does, does or not. If he flips this and kills on one one, I get I get a trade here. However, if he flips this and then kills my librarian and kills my one one, like kills this with, with some sort of spell, removal spell, like a journey journey to nowhere. Don't you do a podcast with Frank, get him to play a real game, and you have your co-host? Frank's also, uh, he's kind of busy at the moment, too. Uh, he hasn't been on Twitter for a while, and he's, uh, I can try to get, I can try to talk to Frank, but Freshly Brewed isn't as, isn't as consistent as Think Twice has been. Uh, for those that are wondering, this is my Think Twice podcast. That's episode one, apparently. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Think Twice. This is our first episode of... All right. This is my Think Twice podcast. If you, like, if you guys, like, want to check that out. I sometimes talk about Hex, and uh, but it's mostly magic. But we also talk about movies, like talk about Star Wars, whatever... New releases on Netflix. That's kind of cool. Do you know what happened to Varanus? I don't know exactly what happened to Varanus. I just know he has other obligations. Like, he, he didn't tell me exactly what's going on, but he's, he's, he, has, he has other priorities right now. So, okay, so I feel that Hex community has been doing a great job promoting the game with people like Neo, Penta, Hacky, etc. But to get big names of the magic community like yourself and Jeff involved introduces it to a broader circles. It's true. And that that's what the game needs. It needs more people playing it. I agree with that as well. That music, you love it? <laughs> Thank you. We actually, we actually uh, the podcast is just me and Justin Parnell. If you guys know Justin Parnell, he does Commander. Um, but we have a, we we actually ha we actually have, have have someone that like manages the podcast too. His, his name is John. All right, I'm gonna tackle this. He can chump block if he wants to. If he chump blocks, obviously he won't connect. He is chump blocking. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't think he was chump block. Well, in that case, I'm going to kill this. I'm going to kill this because this has, this, has, this has a trigger. 
whenever he casts a ardent troop, he, he makes a valor no matter what. Like not not when it comes to play whenever he casts one. I'm gonna kill that. Alright, well I can't attack I can't attack through that. Okay, my opponent's fate weave, fate weave twice. He's used a shard and he's fate weave with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to use my hero power. Uh, he can choose if he wants to mill the top four cards or let me draw a card. If he mills, it undoes both his fate weaves. Yeah, so I didn't think so. Luckily, we're still gonna undo his fate weave. This will mill him three cards, so it'll, it'll undo, it'll, it's gonna undo his fate weave anyways. Kind of sweet for me. He put lands on top? That's interesting. Peculiar. I'll make him discard two cards. Frostlock and Wise Magistrate. Frostlock is a journey into nowhere, but exiles any any permanent or any, anything on, anything on, on in play. It exiles three of them. Okay, so now so now my opponent's a banner. All the guys have speed or haste. He's only attacking with one creature because he he doesn't want my. Librarian to connect with his or with his base. I don't need shards, obviously. This is weird, but I think I'm gonna massacre. Like I, I can attack. If I attack, he he will block. And then I can massacre and kill this, but then he'll get, uh, he will get two, two, fly, two one one flyers. There'll be two ones because of the banner. Or I can massacre now and give this one toughness to attack, and then two attack, one toughness. This will live two. It just, it just means I take less damage. Because next turn I kind of have to cast this. I mean, this is gonna be this is gonna be rough either way. I think I'm gonna, I think I, I think I need to do this though, just to try to live as long as, as long as I can. It's not pretty. Uh, I had to meet for a minute. Are you and Varnus still on a team for Hex? No. Uh, I think he's on a team. I am on. I've been on no team for a while. For the past like four or five. Cosmic Cosmic Count Showdowns. I've been on I've been on no teams. All right, looks like we might lose this one. He has one more Valor. I think right. I have to block with this. If I don't block, he's gonna flip this and kill and kill me anyways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm in a really rough spot. So he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven damage on the board. He has a valor in his hand, which gives a creature plus one plus one. So that's eight damage. And this makes another valor, that's nine damage. And then if he draws a creature, it has speed. So I, I'm I'm pretty close to just dying. Was it not is it was it not was it not worth holding massacre for his turn? What do you, what do you mean for his turn? Massacre is a you mean like massacre is a sorcery speed. I 
I can't massacre during a. It's, it's basic. If, if that's what you're saying. Man, Blaze of Glory. Deal 7 damage, or deal 8 damage, gain 8 life. Next turn. Or I can get Heart of Embers, which will kill a kill a I'm getting Blaze of Glory. Oh, you thought Massacre was quick? Nah. It'd be, oh, man. I wish it was quick. It'd be really good. Again, I'm most likely dead here. I'm bet to a plethora of different things. Three, four, five, six, seven. He has nine available to him. Need need another master off the top. That is true. A mass. I mean, a voice stars gaze would be a two. If I if I do voice stars gaze, I could kill this and make a chump blocker. A massacre or a gaze would have been really good. Off the top. How costly resource threshold rarity would be a massacre or extinction card if it were quick? Does MPG have any such cards? Oh wow. So my opponent drew a f uh, I'm dead. He drew a, a dragon. I'm 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. He drew a dragon, which kills me very quickly. Obviously, it's a dragon. Alright, duress is not good 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 here. This card's obviously not not that great here. Um I want massacres, I want the this removal. And cut one of these. Whoops. Let's try again. Uh, Magic does have one. I think I think it's the the best one it has is called Faded. Faded Retribution. Retribution. Faded Retribution for magic. It costs seven. A Faded, a faded, faded Retribution is actually really good in magic. It says it's cost seven. And it says destroy all creatures and planeswalkers at instant speed. However, if you play at sorcery speed, you get to scry two. Uh, let me see. Finish. Card faded retribution. All right, this is this is the card. If you're curious, I think in hex uh, they can definitely do it if they wanted to. Gross. It was. It wasn't. Even, it wasn't. Even, it wasn't even played. Which is crazy. It was because like the the creatures are so good now. Like when they die, they don't normally they don't necessarily die. Even in this game, like killing a crusader. There's drawbacks to killing. There's drawbacks to, to killing some creatures. I do think this game should does need a uh, a four cost. Board clear or five cost board clear, like 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 a four cost. Like, like, let, let's say a, a card that cost diamond diamond three, so five total, and it says destroy all creatures and artifacts. Like that'd be good. It's 
it still costs a lot so like people can get under you or burn you out but Sunless Sinus is eh. Sunless Sinus only ta only kills attacking creatures, but yeah. Yeah, Ash is really good. Ash is, is one of the better ones for sure. Ashes is not quick. It is not quick. No. There's no. There's no. The, the, the closest. The closest one we have is definitely still incidents. Holy crap! All right. It's pretty good. Well, I mean, I have to kill one now. Alright, play the librarian. Take them to the library. Teach them how to read. Not sure they'll ever a quick a quick board clear? They might one day. Uh, seven, seven is definitely reasonable. Seven is completely fine. <clears throat> uh, saga, saga decks can kill you like on, on turn three or four. A seven mana board wipe is a, a quick action even is completely reasonable. Oh, I guess we do have one. <clears throat> I guess the closest one we have is a. Uh, we do have a. We do have a quick, a quick, a quick speed board wipe that kills everything. But, uh, it, it cost eight. Uh, and it's kind of weird. It's called heartbreak. Heartbreak takes all cards in play and crips and hands and puts them into the controller's deck. Obviously, it's right there. And the, the, uh, the false heart fractured says, at the beginning of each player's turn, they get uh, one one, so they get one land basically, or and they draw they draw an additional card. So my opponent needs to draw, if he draws a resource, he can, so basically, I guess my opponent kept a hand with triple whack shot, which is a pretty scary hand if they get going, because they, they all have momentum, and when they deal damage to a player, they give momentum to other troops. All right, let's play Whispers. No. Actually, huh. I kind of want to play Colt first. Let's play Colt first. The reason I'm playing Colt first is because I'm going to attack with her. She's unblockable. She's unblockable because she's Chaos Touched. We got a troop. All right, nameless devourer. That's good. So, 
They could choose if they want to mill 10 cards or leave, leave this in play. If they mill 10, we're going to draw a bunch of cards, a bunch of, creat a bunch of creatures. Oh wow, I lied. We drew one creature. We milled 10 cards and drew one creature. I guess we milled just a bunch of shards. We milled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we milled 7 lands. Well, maybe he won't draw a land again. Because we milled, we milled a buttload of lands. Oh, now I milled a creature. Alright. This says when it comes to play, it buries the top four cards of the opponent's deck. This is a 4-2 when it comes blocked. In most top four cards of the, the opponent's deck. I think I'm going to play this. No, let's do that. Let's do this one. Let's Whispers. Let's try to get this to... Uh, t get this to 20. Alright, Squirming Terror. I shall attack with this. Again, this can't be blocked. Alright, we're at 18. Dang it. Alright, we'll, what's this? Is it 2-4? I can tap it. To, no, I'll just play it. I'll play a tear. It's basically, a, essentially this is basically a blocker. Next turn, uh, we'll put one. We'll put one in, into his graveyard. Interesting. I mean, I'll, I'll trade with this. I'll see if he wants to. All right, so we kill his wise magistrate and take two. So that thing, that thing's kind of annoying. All right, end of his turn, we'll mill him for three. This will be online. Um. <clears throat> Let's do this first. Let's draw three cards first. This could happen no matter what. We'll attack with the the Void Star. Basically, generate random. Oh, we generated li we generated a librarian, a non altering art librarian, which is good. So play a shard. Uh, play a librarian and pass. Deal. Uh, discard, discard. Alright, to create banishing. This this is again journey into nowhere. Okay. I'll strangle this. Alright, we'll attack first with Void Star. She's still unblockable now because of this thing. Nameless Citizen. Alright, we'll give our opponent the choice to mill for and give us more cards or draw a card. Alright, choose draw draw a card. Four, five, six, seven. I'm just going to play this. 
Gonna play out the troops. These are also all unblockable because they are they're all chaos touched. And she makes chaos touch troops, so. What's up? Osri Hex. He gets he gets to put a shot on top or land on top, it's not gonna matter because we're gonna mill it mill, mill, mill him twice. All right. So on to game, game trace. I'm gonna try two of these. I'll try one. No, I'll try. I'll try two. I'll try two of these. Because they they exile his Arden Crusader and the Moonrise Elder. So try that. We'll give it minus one cost and Oh, I guess this is just gets one. Yeah, minus one cost. So this way we can we can actually exile his guys that have sockets. And he has at least uh he has four. He has four Crusaders, and then he has some number of uh, Moonrise Elders. Probably four Moonrise. Probably four Moonrise, Moonrise Elder because they're like the best cards in his deck. So he has like eight socket cards. All right, after this game, we will open the primal pack that Fur gave us, and it'll give away uh, some of the contents in that pack. Uh, oh man, this hand is, oh man. It has no, no early removal spells. It has two cults, which I don't really want early on. Like if we if we had a third shard if if we, if we had like a if this was a ice or if this is nice I would keep it. Hmm. I'm trying to think how fast I can turn on Nameless Pact. I can like bury one card every turn. But if my plan is a dark heart, it's gonna. I'm gonna I don't think his hand's good enough. This hand isn't. This hand isn't much better. This hand actually has no play for a while. But at least we have shards. Least we have shards. All right, so my opponent uh, fate weaved. He put a card to the top. I'm whatever the card that card is. I'm just gonna mill it. Maybe he needs creatures or lands. I don't know. I'm just gonna take it away. He mill three lands. So I, ma I imagine he he definitely put he put a land on top. He might have needed lands. I don't know. Should have played this first. Oh, he, had a, he, he couldn't. He couldn't do it first. He had. He had a uh, the wrong shard. Now. 
Next turn we have a couple choices. Hopefully he doesn't have a troop. If he has a troop, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty scary. Alright, there's no troop right now. Check one. Alright, I wanna play the librarian so I can maybe block. I could have made him discard two cards with uh, this thing, but I'm gonna wait. This card is just really good. Like it's good. It's a good attacker. And it's a pretty good blocker. Like obviously you don't really want to block with it, but you can block with it, which is cool. All right. So he fate weaved again. He put something on top. We're gonna see what he put on top. Oh man, I really, I really like the, the frost lock, but we need two two diamonds to, to play it. I'll take his, huh. I'll take his diamond. And I'll play this. This, when it comes in play, it will exile all uh, socket troops, my opponent controls, and get, get plus three attack for each one socket this way. So we got a six four. It's pretty good. I have a question. You're playing in the team Grand Prix this weekend, and your team has asked you to play Modern. What do you sleeve up? Uh, Lantern. I sleeve up Lantern Control. I'm actually going to a team event this weekend. It's not not not, not team event. I'm going to an open, a Modern open. I'm playing Lantern with uh, Doctor Foundry and Sword of the Meek. And I'm also going to play one time sieve in the sideboard so that I can take I can take infinite terms infinite turns. DTFO one sub. Oh come on, come on. Yeah, I'll trade. You want your friend turns? Doctor Foundry with the uh, sword, sword of the meek, makes Doctor. So every five mana you spend, you get you get a turn. So uh, if you have five mana, you get infant turns. All right, let's attack first. We'll take the fixing so we can cast his deck. Hmm. Sure, I'll play Dark Heart. So he's going to lose the whack shot or the banner. I mean, most likely he's going to lose the whack shot. I probably should play this tapped to make sure I draw a non shard instead of the the well. Not probably. I sh definitely should have. <laughs> okay, so he has to sacrifice a non socketed troop. I imagine it's going to be the whack shot. This is too important for him. Wait, what? Why would you sec? Why would you lose that?
I, I don't understand. Don't understand. Okay, let's put a non-resource on top. I should, I should, should, I should have done this first. To ensure that this doesn't go on top of my deck. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't go on top of my, on top of my deck. Because I want, I want something else, not that. Alright, two Valors. Okay, he's, he sacked the right. He sacked the price of the right whack shot. More valors. Okay. I'm just going to wait on this. There's no real reason to use it now. These live through Dark Heart because they are socketed. You see on the side how they have like, they're socketed. So these will definitely live. Because Dark Heart, Dark Heart says sacrifice a non-socketed troop. Each player does on their upkeep. Hmm. I'll take four for now. Right, go to his end step. We'll kill this one. Or try to kill it. Alright, he gets two spirits. But he's gonna lose one. No more shards. Uh, he's gonna lose one on his turn. Alright, Levant is not good for us. It's the opposite of good. It kind of, it kind of actually locks us out. Uh, we need Massacre, like now. If we draw Massacre, we can kill Le Le Levant, but without Massacre, we can't do anything. So we need a Massacre or a removal spell. Because I'm trying, we're not costing charge power because I, 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 was trying to save, I was trying to save it for uh, Void Star, the Sightless. I also don't want him to get a Robo Girl. I don't think he's playing Robo Girl though. Right, we can do one. No, I probably should, I probably should still, still just save, save until you Fate Weaves or something. Well, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why you let me draw a card. Heart of Ambers. Opponent has a <coughs> has a ton of valors. <coughs> I 
He can deal us a good amount. Six more damage. Six, seven, eight. He can deal us eight damage this turn. It's pretty scary. Okay, this has to die. Okay. Smell him again. I want this as a actual troop. Uh, when this attacks, it mills two cards. Whenever a creature goes to his graveyard from his deck, it gets plus one attack permanently. When this attacks by the top of the cards of each opposing team in the deck, this gets a plus one attack for each troop right this way. Alright. Gonna play the pact. I can make him discard two cards, but I really wanna I really want the body. I want the four six body. A nameless pact is a constant. An enchantment, it says, if you be dealt damage, void that many cards in graveyards instead. When you can't, when you can't void a card in, in, a, in a graveyard, you lose the game. So essentially we are at 40, uh, 44 health. Alright, since he's trying to valor it again, I will strangle I will kill it this time. Oh man. That's I usually don't call, um, I usually don't call snipers, but, uh, like, traditionally you don't play this card until you have five diamonds, unless, you know, I'm holding this card spell. Um, and he kind of played, he play, kind of played, kind of played into strangle, so that, so that I would strangle his, uh, Creature instead of, instead of splitting it. Either way, it's not a big deal. Like, we're still in a good spot. If he is or if, he, if he's not, it's whatever. It's part of streaming sometimes. Like, he had three cards in his hand and he made an effort to play every, every, every single card out. And he, and he, like, he could have held this until he had the fifth diamond so that, uh, and held the Ballers too. So if he gets his fifth diamond, he can reanimate the dragon. What's the one, two? The dragon isn't that big a deal. Or a Moonrise Elder, I guess. Alright, he's taking the he's taking the berry card, which makes sense. Food has been hunted, killed, cooked, and consumed. Now return to the entertainment. Hooray! Demented Whispers would be 
Whispers is good. Um, Alright, now we're in trouble because he drew his last... Whispers will be good or any, any removal spell would have been good. This sh Getting a shard is very good for him because he gets all this stuff. And he gets, reanimate, he gets to start reanimating uh, cards in, grave, in his graveyard. It's not the end of the world. It's just uh, pretty annoying. It's not good if we keep drawing shards, that's for sure. That's also a really good draw. He he has three times four. He has twelve damage. They 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 can deal to it to wherever he chooses. They always type at campers. Well, I also think he's also think he's sniping, but it's fine. Uh, now we're dead. Rats. Oh well, it was close. Um, One more turn. Ten. Man, we drew four shards. Four. We drew three shards. Massacre. Then another shard. Uh, if I play this, million for four gains us four life, but it's not enough. It's eight. Nine ten. He has thirteen damage. Eleven, yeah. All right. GG. I don't say GGs to people I think are sniping. Again, the only reason I think I, the only reason I, I don't usually accuse people of sniping, but the only reason I think I, he did is because the way he played his Valors and how he uh, played the daughter when when I had a... Uh, he played he went from four cards to no cards when I had the cockatoo in my hand and he played the daughter out. 
into a removal or into whatever, I'm way more likely to have a removal than I am to have a uh, discard effect. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a giveaway. Let's open the pack that Fur gave us, and we'll um, give some stuff, at, give some cards out of it, give them away. You guys can you guys can thank Fur for this. He gave he gave he gave us his panel pack. Sweet. We got some good stuff. Um, pen. This is a good pack. I'm just gonna give away all the good, <coughs> all the good cards, all the cards worth money, basically. Uh, I'll give out. Write down, lady, lady bark first. Next will be blight knight. Next will be scion of Levant, which is worth a good amount. Um. I won't give out this. She's not worth anything. Uh, this is not worth anything. The saber tooth. I'll give out saber tooth. It's not worth much, but it's hey, it, it's it's played. It's played a lot of decks. Uh, I'll give. I'll skip. I'll skip the dice. This is not really played. Runic upheaval. It's not. Like, I'm trying to avoid feel bads. I guess like I want to give out all playable cards. Runic Upheaval is like a, it's kind of playable. It's like hit or miss. I'll give it out. I don't think it's worth much. Let's, let me see how much it's worth. Because I don't, I don't even want to feel bad for winning like one card over another. Okay. Worker Bot's already gone. Apparently. What's wrong with Worker Bot? Why won't it just stay in my channel? What's up, Snaps? Oh, now, now I've split it right. Alright. What's up, Frex Eric? Alright, I want to skip over Runic Upheaval. Um, if someone wants it, I'll, give, I'll, I'll, I'll roll it. Uh, Destiny lead isn't played. Not worth anything. It's not really worth anything. It's not worth anything. Uh, Mas Master Don also not played. Uh, Brosi is played. I'll give I'll give out Brosi, and I'll give out the Seeker. So we will we will roll for Lady Blight Knight Scion Sabretooth, uh, Brosi and Eternal Seeker. And what's going to happen is the person that wins the first roll will pick one of those one of those one two three four five one of those six cards. The person that wins second picks that picks what what's left over. Basically, we're going to pick uh, whatever is uh, whatever's left. And then like like last roll, we'll get whatever's left over. How do we enter? Good question. First, we roll this. All right, open this. All right, let me leave this page. I have to go to a special night bot Okay, I'll put the 
this right. Ah. Uh, okay. Um. Add screen capture. Yeah. All right, giveaways. We will do keyword. Shh. Easy. All right, the keyword's going to be uh, lucky. So all you have to do is enter lucky to enter the giveaway. Okay, so this fills up, and I like to do a little extra for people that do subscribe to me. Uh, the people that do help me out uh, by subscribing, uh, I want to give you guys an extra chance to win. So I'm going to give you guys a basically some subscriber luck. Me has one twenty-seven. Ooh, ooh. Welcome to the pack, man. Thanks for following. Thanks for being here. Oh, people give... All right, then we got Radbot. Welcome to the pack. Oh, oh. Well, let's put this here. All right, so if you're a subscriber, you have a better chance to win these cards. I'm going to give you guys uh, three times likely. So basically, it's basically you, you enter three times. We get Nazgul. Thanks for sub, man. You are now master of the hunt. Woo! Thank you for being a subscriber and uh, help me out. So, oh! Bruce, oh. come here. Oh. 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 Thank you, Bruce. Thank you. You're the best, Bruce. We love you, Bruce. All right. All right. Uh, Coach, do you want to be in the in it? You're not. I think it put you on here because you said something. But if you actually want to be in the draft, just type in Lucky, and you can be a. Uh, A uh, chance to win. Is is this a dog or a crying child? Oh come on, that's my doggo, man. It's Bruce. That's Bruce. Bruce. I can take you out. Now nah, I'll leave you in. If you win. You, you give away a card to whoever you want, okay? You just forward your giveaway to whoever you want. I'm leaving you in. Kiggles, if you win, you take, you take the card and just give it to whoever you want. If I win, I'll take upheaval. All right, sure, deal. If you win, I'll give you the upheaval. All right, we're gonna start. We're gonna start rolling. All right, our first winner is Frex Eric. You've won. Give me your in-game name. Uh, and your choices are Lady Blightbark, Blight Knight, <coughs> Sign of Levant, Primordial Sabretooth, Brosy Buck, or Eternal Seeker. Yep, you get to choose what you want. The Seeker.
All right, there's a seeker. And your in game name is. All right. Sweet, gotcha. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and mark that off. All right. No, man, thank you. Thank you. You got you actually, you also have subscribers. So thank you, too. I appreciate it. All right. Next winner is... Ellendale. Congratulations. You have Lady Blightbark, Blight Knight, Sign of Levant. All right, Sign of Levant. Stream winner. All right, sign is gone. Suits are not going. Next one. Seth Annan. You're welcome, man. Congrats. Seth, you have between Lady Blightbark, Blight Knight, Sabretooth, or Brosy Buck? Seth, you here? You'll take Brosy. There's no other choice. Of course there's not, man. The Mary Caravan. How can you not take the Mary Caravan? What's your in-game name, Seth? All right, says Seth Anon, or Seth Anon. All right, Brosy is gone. Now we have Sabretooth, Blight Knight, and Lady Blight, Lady Blight Bark. Sixty apes. You get Lady Blight Bark, Blight Knight, or a Sabretooth. What's up, Biznatch? Sabretooth, please. What's your in-game name, 60 Apes? Ape a lot. You know what, man? I'm going to give you... I have a ton of these from Hex Bashes. Uh, I, don't, I don't need eight. I th eight. Here, I'll, I'll give you one of the animated ones. There you go. If that's okay. If you want a regular one, let me know. In case, like, maybe maybe you don't like animated cards, that's fine too. Alright, next up we have... All we have left is Blight Bark and Lady Blight Knight. Snaps has won.
the alternate arts hit harder, I heard. They hit they hit harder, um, and you draw them we need them. You draw them perfectly. Snaps if you're here. Sweet. You love you a lady. Alright, lady it is. This dress is in game name. Okay. Congratulations. All right. And the last one we have is Blight Knight. The winner of Blight Knight is Aqua Cladis. I'll give you the Blight Knight, the Blight Knight, wow, well, Blight Knight, Blight Knight, and the Runic Upheaval. Give me an in-game name. I'll go ahead and send this out to you. Do you have three extra of the shards that turn cards colorless? I need them for PvE. I will look. What's your uh, in-game name? Aqua, you here? You've won. You have fifteen more seconds. At the two minute mark, I'm going to reroll. Five seconds. All right, last chance. All right, we roll. We roll. We are rerolling. Wow, wow. Look at the irony. Aqua says to give them to me. Then Nightbot says. Limestone wins. Hacks. Hacks. Is your your game name just limestone, right? Pretty sure, pretty sure it's just limestone. I'll double check till you say well, I'll double check though. Yes? So let me see if we have any uh, prismatic shards. What are they called? I can't wait. Can't wait. That shard is called. I have one permafrost. You can have it. Jakisha. There you go. Congratulations to the winners. Um, let me minimize this real fast. All right, that was. I I am st I'm still planning to do a giveaway myself.
Transfers, librarian. Colt. Two. All right, we're going to do another giveaway. Uh, this giveaway, the last giveaway was because of the fur. We're going to do another one. All right, this keyword is Bruce. This one's from Bruce. Uh, it's gonna be, again, three times subscriber looks. If you're, again, I like to give away for people that, that help me out. Try to get in the back something too. So you have three times, to, you have three times as much chance to win my giveaways. Uh, we are gonna give away, so if you win, you have a chance to pick a Demented Whispers, a Librarian, uh, Two Cult of the Nameless Cities, uh, two Demented Destinies. So like, and these go together. So if you so if you say Cult of the Nameless City, I will give you two Cult of the Nameless City. Like you get both of them. If you say you want De Demented Destiny, I'll give you two Demented Destinies. And then also Nameless Nameless Draught. Nameless Draught is always going to be an option. I have five total, but you can only get one. So no, ma no matter when no matter when you win. You can pick a nameless drought or drought, however you want to say it. And I'm going to do a total of five, five giveaways. So I'm going to pick five people. And then after, then after this, I probably have to go. I'm going to get some water while you guys enter. And I'll be right back. So make sure no one did anything. All right, cool. So I'll do my spiel one more time, guys. If you enjoy the stream, make sure you follow. You can support by shopping Bow Shopper. Use code Ollie, use code Ollie five to get five percent off. That five percent comes back to me. Um, you can also be a subscriber. Subscribing 
obviously obviously helps me and motivates me to streaming, but also uh, I'm gonna try to do giveaways at the end of my streams every time I stream. And if you are a subscriber, you will have a three times likely chance to win. So yeah, that's my spiel. All right, first winner is. Lord Goyf. You, you can pick it Demented Whispers, The Librarian, Two Cult and Nameless Cities, Two Demented Destinies, or a Nameless Drought. The greatest giveaways, obviously, your content. Well, thank you. Thank you, Limestone. <laughs> but I can produce more content the more I get back from uh, Hex Entertainment or Peoples. One Demented Whispers. You got it. I wish Hex. I mean, I wish Hex was as, as popular as like Hearthstone, man. That would mean I could stream all day. Wouldn't have to worry about going to work. If it'd be great. All right, congrats, Lord Goyf. So mark that off. You're welcome, man. All right, next winner is Magoo88. One day, hopefully. I hope so too, Biznatch. I hope so too. I hope it. I hope it. At least, at least gets as big as Magic. Plus one for no work. Hey, my. I, I wish I could make like just com just completely make content. Uh, for a living. Like, I love main content for Hex and... But, uh... It's hard... You, you, just, you can't keep doing something, like, forever if it's, like... You have uh, basically a family, if that, if that makes any sense. Okay, sorry. You have Librarian, Two Cult of the Nameless Cities, Two Demented Destinies, or One Nameless Drought. Uh, again, it's the libra librarian. All right. Also, what's your in-game name? Let me get your in-game name too. It's my goo. All right. You're welcome, man. All right, next winner. Nazarnab. You are the winner. Your choices are two cult of nameless cities, two demon destinies, or one nameless drought. Uh, Whispers was given away. You have... Sorry. Whispers was taken by the first winner. Your choices are... Cult of the Nameless City. Uh, Demented Destiny. Alright, Demented Destiny. And what's your... What's your... What's your in-game in name? Alright, got it.
Oh, uh, one's, one's gonna be full art. So, apologies. So, ba I basically, I made you a full art, a full art addict because I just, I just sent you one full art, one not. So, you gotta like go all full art now. Seth, you've won again. So your choice is uh, two cult of the nameless city or one nameless drought. I believe your name was also Seth N on here too, right? You're welcome, Nazarnab. Oh, check what you're missing. All right, your choices are two cult of the name of city, or one nameless, uh, nameless drought. Cult. And your name is Seth again. I'm pretty sure it says it's, it is says Seth Anon, right? Just to make sure. You're welcome, Seth. Pretty sure it's your name. Yep, all right, I thought it right. All right, cool. All right, last winner gets the, gets a nameless drought. It is Ben82. Congrats, Ben. Congrats, all winners.